Adventures of Prince Ahmed was the first full-length animated film in the history of the cinema. It was made by Lotto Reiniger between 1923 and 26 in Potsdam, Germany. For the past 20 years or so, she has been working in her studios in Barnum. Here she has produced one after another her unique silhouette films, the technique of which she was the pioneer. Since Miss Reiniger made Prince Ahmed, she has made over 40 films, all using simple variations of the basic technique. And simple though this technique might seem, it is in the subtlety of its application that its success is achieved. Here I am to tell you about what I shall have to do to make a silhouette film. First of all, select an idea which I like to do very much for the work takes a very long time. Let us make Papageno. The chosen character, Papageno, has first to be fitted into the story, and for this, various sets of figures are designed. These eventually complete the final storyboard, the blueprint for the film, showing the different sequences which will later be further broken down into the particular movement of the figures. Despite the intricate nature of her specialized technique of filming, the importance of the story must not be underestimated in Miss Reiniger's work. The magic of the fairy tale has always been her greatest fascination. Yet, her own interpretation has been a unique quality. Once it is decided how Papagino will look, Miss Reiniger can begin to cut out the figure. First is head with its feathery headdress, for Papagino is a bird catcher and must look like a bird in order to carry out his profession. The original film of Papageno, taken from the sequence in Mozart's opera she made in 1935. The figures she cut out and constructs were originally inspired by the puppets used in traditional Eastern shadow theatres, of which the silhouette film is the logical conclusion. And nowadays, much of her time is devoted to staging shadow theatre plays. Yet it is remarkable how little the technique has changed. The material, the black cardboard, the scissors, remain the same as for our earliest film, the first of which she made in 1917. And then the whole figure and his costume are cut out in individual sections. The number of separate pieces does of course depend on the amount of movement that is required of the figure. Papageno being a particularly important character is particularly complex construction. First, small holes are pierced in relevant points. All these limbs and pieces of costume are joined together with small wire hinges. The hinges are intricately tied, for it is essential that they successfully withstand the constant movement demanded of them. When such a hinge is subject to excessive use, it is weighted with flat pieces of lead, which helps also, of course, keep the figure flat, for otherwise it might warp under the heat of the camera light. And then the whole figure is rolled out flat. Despite the speed of the construction, Miss Reiniger will continue to have a strange effect for each of her figures, an understandable for in their flexibility they have almost human characteristics of movement. His movements are checked, standing, sitting, kneeling, hopping, and so on. Now he can be filmed, and for this he must be placed on the animation table. This is a trick tape. If you don't have such a thing at home, 
You take your best dining table, cut a hole into it, put a glass plate over it, and over the glass plate some transparent paper, and then you put some light on from underneath. And then you switch the other light in the room out, then you see the story that your figure now is the real figure. To make the figure move, it must be placed in the correct position and a shot taken. The figure is then moved a fraction further and the second shot taken. And so on, so that with much patience and concentration, the figure moves more and more. The camera shutter opens again and again and the final result will be the figure moving across the screen. There is, of course, a great deal more to it than this. For example, among the specialized techniques which may have to be employed is the possibility of the figure turning. Moving the scene before, it is first necessary to mark its position. The next step is to turn its head, take a picture, and then gradually the limbs are turned one by one and pictures taken. You can now proceed to move in the opposite direction. Alternatively, one can cheat a little by turning the figure as another figure passes in front of him. Because the camera is fixed, and besides, to go too near to small figures would make their outline appear too rough, to achieve close-ups it is necessary to construct an entirely new version of the original figure. In this way, the expression of the figure may be altered in close-up. As this is a profile art, the action is composed so that the effects of distance or depth are avoided to maintain a purity of style. But these magical figures must sometimes come into the picture from nowhere. For this effect, the shape of the figure must be repeated in numerous different sizes, all numbered. Starting with nothing, the smallest of the figures is placed on the set, a shot taken, and the next in the series put in its place. Gradually, the figure will reach its destination and appear full-sized on the screen. This effect can be used for all kinds of transformations and appearances. One of the most important tools of the technique are the scissors, and it is in the construction of the backgrounds that the scissors play one of their most vital roles. Constructing the different layers and thicknesses of transparent paper over all these layers is placed a single sheet of paper to give the figure freedom to move. And for the clouds and water, a second glass plate is used so that these can appear slightly out of focus. Bearing in mind that the camera is fixed, it must be emphasized that in order to create penning effects, it is necessary to move the whole set. Each movement is charted on a rule, so that the movement of the set is coordinated with that of the figure. During the shooting, each frame is numbered and recorded in the shooting book, so that the number of shots corresponds music and the movement. Four, 
if the action is fitted to the music like a ballet, with the sound recorded beforehand, then from the score a particular number of shots are caused to the length of each bar. This carefully calculated shooting of the film may proceed so that this delicate balance of musical notes for individual movements of the figure and of camera shots will produce the harmony which characterizes the films of Lotte Reinecke. <laughs> Bei alt und jung im ganzen Land. War ich mit dem Locken und zu gehen und mich auf Weiten zu verstehen. Nun kam ich froh und lustig, seinen alle Bügel sind ja mein. Miss Reiniger was almost from the outset husband, Karl Koch, who died in 1963. He had been a prominent filmmaker in his own right, working with Jean Renoir on the first World War classic, La Grande Illusion, and completing Tosca for him in Italy. More recently, he and Miss Reininger developed the silhouette technique to include color. The construction of colored figures is much the same as that of the silhouette, but they are dressed up colored paper above, the hinges hidden beneath. Various parts of the set are also constructed in this way, but mostly the backgrounds are made up of colored cinemas, allowing an infinite number of colors and combinations to be achieved. The cinema background is covered by a layer of frost, matte colorless cinemas, which saves the figures being caught in the background and also gives a unison the otherwise rather sharp outline. With the use of top lighting, the color of the figures is highlighted. Lit from below, the effect is that of silhouette with colored background an effect used in several Reiniger films. This set is from interlude in the Coventry Theatre pantomime, The Frog Prince, and shows the well into which the frog has jumped in order to retrieve the princess's golden ball. <laughs> 